Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm going to walk you through a really solid framework for selling anything as a freelancer. So maybe you're selling websites, maybe you're selling SEO, Google ads, email marketing, whatever it is. This is a framework that consistently works. It's 12 different stages. I'll break each one down, show you the purpose, some questions to ask in that stage, and then the logic behind it. So if you stick with me here, go through this full video. This is basically a full sales course right here that you can put into action straight away and get really, really solid results. So if you're ready to go, let's get into it. If you want this actual sheet that I'm using, just check out the link down below this video and I'll give it to you for free. If you get value out of this, just comment on the video. It definitely helps you with YouTube and you can share it with someone else if you wish. So stage number one to kick this off is quite simply, you just get the business owner talking. You ask a very simple question. Hey, how's it going today? How are you? How are things? And you just get them talking basically. Now with a sales conversation, this isn't cold calling someone out of the blue. This is when they expect to talk to you. So you've already done some prospecting or a warm lead or somebody's come to you. And this is the conversation where you sit down or you have a phone call or you have a Zoom call and it's expected that you're going to talk to each other. So with that in mind, this is it. Just kick it off, simple question. And now you're good and you're ready to go into stage number two. Now, stage number two, and this is really, really key. You got to set the frame. And if you haven't heard, the, heard that word before, it basically just means the direction and the tone of the conversation. And the logic behind this is as a seller, we need to control the conversation. So you won't be able to get what you need to build a potential deal if the sales conversation's all over the place. So to avoid that, quite simply, you just set up the frame. And to do this, you just basically explain how the format's gonna be here. So what you're trying to explain is you're gonna ask the questions, they're gonna answer the questions. Why would they do that? What's the value in it for them? because that makes it a better conversation that has the potential to help their business. That's the underlying context here. So to set this up, you just ask a sample question, something like this. So after they've been talking for a few seconds, you say, okay, cool. So I was hoping to start this talk today by trying to understand your business a bit better. And then we can take a look at maybe some ways we can work together if needed. Does that sound good to you? And of course, they're gonna to agree to this. Now you've set the frame. They understand that you're gonna ask questions, that they're gonna answer it, and that's how things are going to move forwards. If you've done that, that is stage number two. So literally first minute here, you're past these two stages and you're ready to go into stage number three, which is context. Okay, so the context stage is really, really key. And what we're trying to avoid here is rushing ahead and going straight to the end. So of course we wanna find problems. We'll get into that in a few seconds. We wanna find out the different things that might be going wrong that they you know, hopefully buy a solution for to solve. But if you rush ahead, we're not gonna understand their business too well, and that drops our chances of getting a potential sale. So to sell a solution, you need to find problems, but to understand their problems, you need to first start with knowing the overall context. So once they agree to answer our questions, the first type of question that we should be asking is to understand their overall business a bit better before we jump into problems. And you can kick this off at something like, okay, cool. So can you tell me what is going on with your business at the moment? What are you working on right now? And basically have them talk about their business. What are they doing? Who did they sell to? What do they do? What do they offer? What's their products? What's their services? How are things right now? What's going on? Um, whatever it is. Once you know what's going on and you have a quick feel for the business, you're ready to go and you're ready to jump into the next type of stages, which are the problem stages. Okay, so stage number four, the first of the problem stages is to dig into potential issues that you might be able to solve. And the logic here is once you have the overall context, which we've now just done in this previous stage, you can start diving into their problems, but you got to keep in mind, you got to only ask about problems that are relevant to what you can offer. So if they have problems that there's not enough parking spaces in their car park for their staff, unless you sell car parks, <laughs> don't, don't get into that problem because that's not, you know, it is a problem, but that's not leading to what you sell. So you kick this off by taking what they've mentioned in their overall situation, their overall context, and then focusing in on the areas where you think you can offer value and where you think there's potential problems that you can help solve. So to do this, hey, you mentioned X, Y, Z, what they were talking about in the situation. Can you tell me some more about that? That sounds like maybe it's holding you back at the moment, or it sounds like maybe you have an issue right there at the moment, or can I just know more about what's going on with your marketing right now? How are things, are you hitting the goals that you'd like to for your business? So if, they, if you see a potential problem, perfect, jump in on that. If you don't see any problems when they're talking about their situation, then just get into the areas where you think there might be problems. So hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, post up some questions in the chat and I'll do my best to help out. Now, once you get into the general problems, you got to dig deeper 
then the surface level problems, and you really got to get into what are the core issues here. So as they're mentioning problems, this next stage, core issues, start digging in a little bit more. Find out how bad these problems are when they come up and what it's costing them. So if they mention a problem, okay, that sounds quite frustrating. You mentioned there's a problem with your marketing right now. So does that hold you back in any other areas? What does that mean for the rest of the business? Now, why you do this, the logic behind this is it's usually not just the surface level problem. So if they mention a problem at marketing, literally they mention the problem. So what does that mean? They're already aware of the problem on that level. But if you want them to be motivated, then that won't be enough because if it is enough, they would have already done it because they were aware of that problem. So for example, not having enough leads, that's the problem, but that can mean not enough sales. So that's a little bit deeper, but that might mean not enough money. So they got to let some staff go or they got to cut back on other key areas of the business. So it's kind of like a toothache. You go to the doctor for a toothache. Oh, you got a toothache. He doesn't just cover that up with a filling. He goes in and he does the x-ray and he checks and he sees how bad the damage is. Same with a problem for a business. You can't just look at it at the surface. You got to look at everything else that it's impacting. Now, another thing here is as you do this, and you're going to need this later when we get to pricing, you got to get some numbers related to the problem. So if they're mentioning we're not getting enough leads, then okay, that's good. You know, Dig into that some more. But well, how many leads are you getting? How many leads would you like to get? Start getting the numbers attached to this problem because you're gonna need them later when you want to price this deal. So stage number six here is kind of just tying it all up into the big core issue. So the big need and being able to see the key motivators for them to take action. So once you've gone into one problem in a lot of detail or several problems in a lot of detail, then what you really need to do is start summing this up in the business owner's mind. You wanna make sure that you're focusing in on exactly the right key uh, problems and then also the motivation. You want to find the problems that they're motivated to fix right now and that they're willing to spend good money to have those problems fixed. So how you do this is you just ask a question like, okay, so it sounds like this is really impacting and just sum up whatever it is that you've been talking about for the last while. And without that fixed, you're going to have to deal with, and then again, just go back over these big problems. So as an example, so, hey, it sounds like right now, you know, your marketing is definitely where you don't want it to be. And from what you've just said, if you don't get this back on track, it looks like you're not going to have the lead flow that you need to be bringing in the sort of sales numbers that you're trying to hit. And you talked about that impacting the rest of your business, that maybe you're going to have to let some staff go, or maybe you're going to have to cut back on other marketing, or you're going to have to cut costs in some other way, which definitely is not what you want to do. So you're just li literally saying back to them what they've said in a concise way that focuses on how bad the issue is. We're doing this to do two different things. One, we want to confirm that we're focusing on the right pains. Again, the pains that they're willing to take the most action on and put the most money into. And also it serves to make them feel the pain more. Now this might seem a little manipulating, but this is really, really key. So people have problems in their business and they're aware of the problems, but if we want them to take action, we have to make that pain more severe than it currently is. Now, why do we do that? Because if the pain as it stands today, before we talk to them was enough, they would have already taken care of those problems. If you don't do that, we're not going to be able to sell a solution because they're just going to be, ah, you know, I know it's a problem, but I'll get to it in a couple of months because um, it's just not that important right now. Any questions on that? Again, just let me know in the chat. If we're good to go, let's move on to the next stage. So as we move into this stage, and this stage is green because it's positive and this stage is red because <laughs> it's a bit of a problem. In this stage, we, we got to flip it around a little. So up until this point, we've kind of got into the negative side of things. We've got into the pain, the misery, the frustration, all these negative things. And again, we need that pain. We need them to feel the pain, to want to take action. But that's not everything that we need. You also got to know, hey, when the pain is gone, what do you want instead? What, what's the other side of this coin? Hey, you know, if this was fixed, what does your outcome look like? What do you want? What's the desired result here? So the first way to do this is the potential. So now we focus on the upside, the reverse of the big problem that we've just discovered. So you do this by, you know, question something like this. Okay, so let's say this problem does get fixed. The problem you're just talking about, uh, what happens then? What are you hoping to see as a result? And how does this help the business? So there's no point digging into the problems forever. You got to do it enough to, to figure out the problems. Once you've done it enough, now flip it around and get them looking at things in the other direction. So to create a sale, you need a gap between the problem and the solution. 
at this stage, we already know the problem. Now you need to know what they want instead and why they want it. So again, motivation and emotions are very, very key here. We have to know logically why they want it, but also emotionally, what's the drivers here? Why does it matter so much? Now, stage number eight, the value. We got to get into what the solution is worth to them. So we already talked a little bit about numbers and pricing and setting it up. And we did this in the problem stage where we got into the numbers related to the problem. Now we got to get into the numbers related to the solution. So they want this dream outcome. They want this place to get their business to that they're going to feel better about where things are going to be nicer. Life is simpler. They're making more money. The business is easier to run. They're getting more clients, whatever it is. But we got to throw some numbers on this as well. It's not enough to just hear them say, oh, I'd love to get to a place where I have more clients. Okay, well, how many more clients? You know, is it per week? Is it per month? How much are those clients worth? Uh, what sort of clients? Uh, how much are they going to bring into the business? What are you going to do with that money when it is in the business? Or what are you going to do yourself when you get that money into your business? So we got to put numbers on these goals and on these problems. It becomes very hard when we price it later. And I'll cover that in a few sections when we get to pricing. So you do this with a question. Okay, this sounds amazing now that they've been talking about their dream outcome. And to understand that better, how much does this improve the business? Ask about how exactly this helps the business. Get a real number on the potential value. Now, stage number nine, once again, is a recap. We just want to make sure we're getting everything correct, that we're crystal clear on what they want, why they want it, how much it's worth. So just go back over what they've just said and quickly recap it. So thanks. So I just want to check that everything you've said, you know, I'm hearing it all correctly so far. Do a quick recap, let them confirm or add in anything extra. And basically then you're on point, you're ready to move ahead to the next stage down here. So the next stage is pricing. And we don't want to do that if we've missed something important and or we are wrong about any point. So before we move ahead to pricing, make sure you know what's going on, you know the problems, what the problem is costing them, you know what solution they want instead, what's that worth to them, and you've checked that this is all correct and that they're happy with everything so far and they feel that it's accurate about their business and how they feel about their business. Okay, stage number 10, this is where we get into price. Stick with me here, there's only three stages left and it's really key that we end this sale correctly. So we're in a really good place if you've been following along with this system so far because we know what the problems are, most important problems, we know what it's costing them, we know what they want the most and what that's worth to them, and this helps us in a huge way. How you do this is you gotta summarize up a couple of things at once. So before we move into pricing, we got to introduce it in the proper way, and you do that with a question like this. So, okay, thanks, you know, coming out of the recap here. So, okay, thanks, so with the big problem, whatever is the big problem in mind, that's costing you around, mentioned the figures from earlier, and then also what you're trying to get to, so talk about the big results, uh, which will help your business do, talk about the goal figures here. What kind of budget did you have in mind for working with this? So what you've done there is before you've actually mentioned any prices, you've gotten this to like the maximum potential. And this is how you set a pricing by showing the cost of a problem and the value of a solution. The bigger the gap between these two, the more sense it makes to pay well to have the desired end result. So obviously when you get into the problem more and you talk about the solution more, you're just setting it up better with better framing to charge a higher price. Now, stage number 11, objections. Quite simply, before we wrap up the call, we just want to make sure that everything is solid so that later when we follow up with our proposal on our invoice, we actually do get the sale. So don't rush ahead. If they mention a good amount of money here, don't think, oh, I got the sale. See you later. I'll send you an invoice tomorrow. You know, you got to lock it in. You got to, you got to test, stress test your own sale a little and kind of shake out any potential problems so you can deal with it in real time. You don't want to deal with this stuff later or try and deal with it later on an email or you don't even hear about it and you wonder, oh, they, they never went ahead. I wonder why that is. You got to get into those questions, those hesitations, the problems or confusions or whatever it is. The buyer resistance. Find out what might stop them from moving ahead with this deal. Now, to do this, quite simply, just ask straight up questions. So, hey, does this sound good to you? Like, does this make sense? Are you happy with this deal? Or do you have any questions? Or do you feel like something's off here? like prompt them a little, almost like there was another person there who was like testing the sale a little. You want to test your own sale. You want to stress test it, shake it a little and make sure that it's still solid. Again, if you don't do this and you just wrap up the call too quickly, 
you have a chance that you might lose that sale. Even if everything else went correctly, there might've been one or two questions that they just needed you to address that if you didn't address, it gets to them. You finish the call and then that night or the next day when they're thinking about the sale, they're like, ah, oh, I just don't know. Like, what about this? Whatever it is, uh, I don't feel so good about the sale anymore. And they back out of the sale. That's the last thing you want to happen if you get to this stage. So make sure that you give them a chance to openly talk about whatever problems or hesitations or issues it is that they might want to talk about. Give them the chance to bring up the problems now so at least you can deal with it in real time. So don't just lock in on a price and hope that it sticks, which is what some people do. They get to this section and then they just wrap up the call and they're gone. Don't do that. <laughs> Test that they feel okay about it and see where they might have some buying resistance. So again, check for those issues, check for those questions, make sure they're happy, perfect. Okay, stage 12, we're pretty much there. This is the last stage. There's a few more things that I wanna show you just to make sure that you're wrapping up your sales calls in the best possible way to give you the best possible chance of closing a deal. So what you wanna do before you wrap up the call and the end of the call, of course, we thank them for everything and we, we wrap it up professionally. But one last thing that we wanna do is have a clear way for them to move forwards. So we want them to end the call knowing exactly what to expect next. And then we actually wanna do exactly what it is that we said that we would do. Now, for most of us, this is gonna be sending a plan and a proposal and a price at some point in the future. So <clears throat> maybe if the sales call is on a Monday, you're gonna say something like, hey, great to talk to you. Thank you so much for sharing all this information with your business. I really feel like we can solve this problem and get you the solution that you're after. What I'm gonna do is just take a day or two to go through everything that you said. And then Thursday, I'll send a plan to you. I'll send some prices. You can see what you think and we can go from there. Does that sound good to you? Perfect, okay, thank you. Talk Thursday, bye. And you just wrap up the call. Now, what that does, it sounds quite simple, but it actually sets like the first kind of expectation of how you work together. And then it shows you that you're doing what you said. So if you get back to them on Thursday with a plan, with everything that you said that you would do on Thursday, that itself actually shows that, oh, this person, this, you know, you as a freelancer, you say you'll do something and then you do it and it's done the way that you said it. It's a very good impression of how you'll perform for them when they actually pay you for whatever it is. So that's it for this video. Really hope that you enjoyed it. Again, this guide or this um, form, whatever you want to call it, is down below if you want to get it for free. And if you like this video, just comment on it and maybe give it a share. That's it. Catch you in the next video. Thank you.